up on top of the mesa. And he heard that there was three mining companies that were thinking about joining together to build a road from the top down and then building roads out of all, across all this to go out here in these valleys to mine. And well, that piqued his interest because he wanted to run cattle out through these canyons. So he got, got a hold of them and they're like, well, yeah, we were thinking about it. He says, I will pitch in a lot of money to build this switchback road to get down in there. Um, if you guys do the, all the work. So they that was it. They said, yeah. And uh, so that's why it's called the Schaefer Trail because that was the rancher's name. That was his name. Yeah. He footed the bill for most of the switchbacks to be built. And uh, so, yeah, once they built it down, then they built all these roads. Well, early 50s, right? There was this guy that used to enjoy coming out here and driving around on these mining roads in his pickup truck. His name was Bates Wilson. He is the one that's saw how beautiful this was and he wanted the land to be protected so he started the fight for the land to be protected. Bates Wilson was the superintendent of Arches and in 1964 it finally worked. He got it to be a national park. He became the superintendent of both parks. By the end of his tenure when he retired in the early 80s he was actually over four parks and the superintendent today she is still over the four parks which is Arches and Canyonlands, Hoven Weep National Monument and Natural Bridges National Monument. They're all within a couple hours of each other. Get the water up on the hill up there. Oh, wow. See the size of those pines up there growing? Yeah. That's where all the water comes from the top down through, so they get more water than a lot. Those trees up there are about 40, 50 feet tall. And they're a tree that are not supposed to be in this region. They're, they're actually a blue spruce. There's no blue spruces around here. It's somehow the seeds got here up top and washed down in and started to grow. Could have been from birds or anything, who knows. Very rare. I just see it other cars coming this way. It's like getting very wide. And that's when you always hope that people understand the unspoken rules of off-roading. People coming up the hill have the right of way. Mm -hmm. Whether you're on a bicycle, hiking, or driving, uphill people always have the right of way. You can see why I said that it's, when if it rains too hard, stuff starts to move. See here what water has done over the years, trenching that out right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a rain pretty good over here yeah. in this corner. So there's some wet. Yeah, we've kind of we let it go right around us. Yeah, it's hard to believe this road was built from the top down in the early 50s, and those companies they were not using new equipment. Most of it was World War II surplus. Deuce and a half trucks made into dumps. Yep. Using old military dozers, all that. There's snow up there. So this a lot of this wasn't, look, a lot of it wasn't uh, rain. It was actually uh, wet snow or sleet. Yep. Yeah, it's, uh, you think about what they accomplished back then doing this. Somebody looked at that wall in front of us and said, we should build a road here. Yeah. <laughs> now here's where they started blasting with dynamite. Uh, they, what they did was, this, this did dish back in, not too far. They actually blew way back in with dynamite and then not quite to the top, but mostly to the top. What they did was they blasted this all out. They wanted all that loose rock, that overburden. They wanted it to fill the valley here, and then they cut the road into the overburden. Mm -hmm. I'm sure back then this road did not look this nice. Oh, but 
it didn't. It was probably just wide enough to get one vehicle through. Imagine those old trucks they used to miss snow. Um, no power steering, no power brakes, no air conditioning, and a hundred and some <laughs> degree summers. Now there's snow along the side here. Yeah, and coming down. Snow in here, raining down there. Yeah. Another, here, another rental, Twisted Jeeps. <laughs> the rental company. You ever see the people that own Jeeps? You ever see the Jeep wave? Two fingers above, they wave like this uh -huh. to each other. And uh, I, for a long time, I never really understood that, you know, that was like peace, you know? It was actually, it wasn't. It was uh, your first people that were driving Jeeps was back whenever the soldiers got out of World War II, they started coming home. They fell in love with those old willies. Uh, yep. You know, what Jeeps were made from. See, he did the okay, two fingers somebody, up. Somebody, somebody's at a house here. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like the car that uh, was in our parking lot a couple days ago. Um, but yeah, it's actually, the wave came from back then. Oh, we're getting snow flurries. Yeah, it was actually V for victory. Oh. That's what the wave was for. Okay. Yep. Soft sleep. <laughs> call it blah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they do. They call it blah. And one thing that happens is when it starts to get like this, uh, the road, this is sand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it turns into mud. Right. And it starts to get slippery. Slippery, yep. So, yeah, it's, uh, we're just going to work our way to get up to the top and so not have to worry about this turning into mud because it's going <laughs> to turn into mud. If it starts to get too bad, the park service will come down here in a little while and check it. And uh, if it starts to get what they deem a little too slippery, they will close the gates. Yeah. So this part of the road right here, the road wraps around and is straight above us. Uh, several years ago, a bicycle missed the turn and landed right here on the road. <laughs> Lived. Yeah. yeah, a lot of things came into play, but... Now, to what capacity he lived, I don't know, but he did live. Yeah. yeah, several years ago I came up this road. I had two women from, they were retired college professors from Australia. We were about this point here. It was snowing so hard you couldn't even see, like, any of that view. You couldn't see it. It was snowing so hard. There was about three inches of snow on the road. And I was in four wheel drive and we were slipping. They didn't know, but yeah, that was a little nerve wracking. Don't worry, if any rocks fall above us, <laughs> yeah. a plastic roof got a good this. strong plastic roof <laughs> <laughs> let's see if there's anybody at the observation point right here sitting up there no nope, nobody there when you're up on the paved road uh, this is one of the best observation points it's after you pass the visitor center and uh it's, you'll see it. It's just a small pull out off to the left. You mm -hmm. just pull into it and you just walk over and look. It gives you a beautiful view of the Schaefer Trail that you just came up. Look at these guys. Look at that. Oh, these guys are nuts. They're actually loaded to camp. <laughs>
<laughs> no. <laughs> Said I want you to get your money's worth. You're doing a good job. <laughs> You haven't scared me yet. I don't want you to feel cheated. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> uh, when they built, when they were building this road, initially they were looking for how to get even start down. Right here was where they wanted the considerations. They were talking about building the road coming down oh, and sure. starting it here. Yeah. And then they chose to just to keep it, keep it down. This is neat. This is awesome. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, viewpoints above us. Whenever you get like these big windstorms, see the guy in the white shirt up there? Yep. He's such a girl. Um, what, when the wind really starts blowing, you, your hats are laying all over the road. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of cool. They're like really like new Patagonia, North Face, like <laughs> like forty some dollar, fifty dollar hats <laughs> laying on the road. <laughs> and they're not coming for them. <laughs> Still coming. Oh, awesome. It's supposed to be uh, partly sunny and it's supposed to be a really nice day today. Welcome to Utah. over 3,000 feet elevation at the river. Okay. Uh, when we get to the top, we're going to be very close to 6,000 feet elevation. 6, Yeah. <laughs> 